Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we got some disassembly and maintenance to do on this big old guy right here. This is the um, Benchmade Crooked River Mini, or Mini Crooked River, or something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and take it apart and uh, see what we can do for it. Um, first off, a uh, quick note on tools. I'm going to be using here a pair of drivers from Scout Leather Drivers, uh, Scout Leather Company, that is, one in bronze, one in brass, that is, one in copper. I'm just giving these a try, uh, but every all the other tools I'm going to use are in my Night Disassembly Toolkit video and I just wanted to uh you know check these out basically see whether an expensive driver is actually you know any improvement over the plasticky sorts of ones I've been using previously so um thank you very much of course to my patreon patrons for letting me take that bath I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a uh, t10 bit here in the uh in the brass one and uh go ahead and pop out the pivot here oh luxurious that little bearing at the bottom there. Um, but anyways, so there's that. And then let's go ahead and, uh, I'm not gonna, am I, am I gonna do the full axis disassembly on this? So there were always a question. Anytime you're disassembling a Benchmade axis lock knife, you have to ask yourself one big question. Do I feel lucky? I'm sorry. No, that's a different thing. Um, you have to ask yourself, why did I just throw my spring bar tool on the floor? No, you don't have to ask yourself that. That's, that's something I only have to ask myself. But the question is whether you want to do a full disassembly, break everything down, uh, or you want to do a partial disassembly and just uh, pop out the pivot, do things that way. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, let's go ahead and do the whole damn thing. <laughs> Famous last words. Okay, that's T8. I don't need T8. I need T6. Come here, T6 bit. Are you T6? No, you're T7. Come here, T6. No, you're T9. Okay, come here, T6. I need to uh, create a little organization for my, um, for my new drivers, uh, for the full-size bits, that is. Okay, that's got some thread locker on there. So let's pop that out, put that, pivot goes up here. And I'm using this little mat here with these little pockets to organize where I'm putting all these various things, just so I can make my life a little bit easier as I'm doing this disassembly. One thing to note, by the way, is that the centering was just about right where it uh, when it started off, and that the um, it had a little tiny bit of blade play at first, uh, you know, as we were getting started here, but not too bad. So uh, those are, you know, I'm not going to be able to fix the blade play potentially, depending on how Benchmade's quality control is these days. Um, but uh, at the very least, I should be able to get it good to go in that sense. And then I'll probably have to pop off the scales, maybe. Okay, so the next question is, will this chunk of, looks like aluminum, just lift off? Maybe? What's going on here? Well, okay, I'm going to start off by pulling the blade out of this guy. Do that, I'll just stick this little tool through here and ideally be able to push the pivot through. Hmm. Well, okay, that's certainly the dream that we have. But the world is expert at telling us that sometimes our dreams are not going to happen. Um, let's see here. How do I pop this through? First, I'm going to shut the blade, because, yeah. Uh, next thing, I need something with a little bit more room to it. Uh, let's go ahead and put... Yeah, that should do it. Go ahead and put this driver. Yeah, we'll use this guy. It's made by a random Russian guy. Usually makes jewelry, but can I pop that through at all? No? I'm wondering whether they used thread locker here and then it just got itself locked shut because nothing is wanting to come loose here. Um, that's weird. Let's try one more time pressing this through. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, it popped through. Um, releasing the tension on the axis lock, although I'd done that before, maybe coupled with the increased pressure of using this driver. Whatever, it's through now, that's, that's good. So now the next question is, what else can I do? Can this be popped loose the rest of the way? Why is this not, oh, that must be glued down, actually. Okay. So I'm actually going to call the larger disassembly part of this off because there is only one screw holding this together, and that's actually holding the stop pin in. So what I'm actually suspecting might have happened here is that they've epoxied shut 
uh, they've epoxy to use some kind of a high-end glue to get this part down onto the steel liners here and in the back as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and do that full disassembly there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a way to go about that, but I don't know it, and therefore I'm a little bit scared by it. Um, and I don't want to injure this knife because this is a loaner from my buddy Nathan. Thank you very much, Nathan. So there you go. Um, there went the pivot screw, but I do still need to pop the pivot out to do any kind of maintenance on it, so not all is lost. But I'll go ahead and put these screws back in place before I go much further, just so as I'm adjusting things, things are in the right positioning, etc. Pop this guy through. So far, I'm liking the... F this gives you a little more torque, having the wider driver. I'm not. That's not a recommendation yet. I haven't spent nearly enough time using these to be able to say whether it's worth the you know, 100 bucks to buy the pair plus the bits. That's a lot of freaking money for a uh, set of drivers. But again, uh, I'm here thanks to my uh, Patreon patrons and all my supporters and whatnot. I'm here to take baths so you all don't have to. I'm not wearing a watch at the moment. In just a little while, I'm hoping to film a watch collection overview update thing. But I figured I'd do this first just because I need to carry this this week. So there we go. Alrighty, let's pop that through. So, um, what I do want to do, though, even if I can't pop that through, is do a little bit of overall cleanup in there. One of the washes... Yeah, there's one of them. Okay, you hearing that in the background there? That little chip 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 chip, chip thing? So that's actually a hummingbird. That's a guy... Well, the, the species is Anna's hummingbird. Um, but that particular hummingbird... Um, his name is Asshole. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Like, Nick, that's awfully cruel. He's just a hummingbird. But no, he's an asshole. Um, and the reason I say that is because we have a hummingbird feeder out there. And it's a big one. It's, there is enough, uh, you know, there are eight freaking fake flowers on the thing. Because I love be some hummingbirds and just birds in general. But anyways, um, I have this giant feeder out there for them. And I'm just going through and using some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip here to clean out this uh, interstitial area where the, the washes sit. And just to kind of get into here... Just clean up as much as I can. But anyways, so I've got this gigantic freaking feeder. This could support half the freaking hummingbird population of the area here uh, down in the San Diego. But asshole over there um, it just sits on the feeder. He just sits there. He'll drink on occasion, like, you know, maybe once every 10 minutes or something like that. But he just sits there, and then when any any other hummingbird comes up, he's like, and then flies at him, like kamikaze style, until they run away. So that's why we call him Asshole, because he really, really is. He's this cute little guy. I mean, he's freaking tiny, like bright pink throat, absolutely adorable, but a gigantic asshole. And so that's Asshole. You're probably hearing him out there, and every time you hear this, that's him trying to scare somebody off who just wants a freaking drink. And it's like, buddy, and I wish I could just go out there and talk with him, like, buddy, you're this close to a ban, but unfortunately I can't ban him either because it's a hummingbird feeder. So, you know, but either way, it, 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 don't be like that. Don't be that guy next time you're in a hummingbird feeder. Don't be like that. Any hummingbirds who are watching, don't be that guy. Anyways, I digress. Um, so, like I said, I've gone through, I've cleaned off the inside of this guy right here. And um, let's, uh, now I'm going ahead and washing off the uh, washes here. That's why they call them washes. Not why they call them washes. But uh, just so I can get us, you know, clean everything off here. Make sure I remove any, you know, vestigial uh, gunk and whatnot. Using, again, some 91% rubbing alcohol. And uh, pretty clean up in here. And then we'll pop this guy loose. I'll pop this loose. It's already loose. Just clean this guy off, that is. And then I'm making sure I want to get up onto this surface here. Because this is an area where... The axis locks can develop some grititude is right up in this area and in fact you can see there's a little deposit of grit uh, in there and so I want to get up in there and clean that off a little sometimes you got to use like a little tool see it there we go beautiful and then probably have the same thing in the back here well, a little bit but not too bad now at this point you're actually pretty well cleaned off here no real concerns I'll go ahead. Is that a little hint of rust? Maybe. Well, I'll hit this with some EDCI uh, solution once I'm done. It's another formula, this stuff here, the uh, EDCI. It died off for a while there, and then it, it came back, uh, mostly, I think, due to Jim Skelton, who's another YouTuber type, uh, and another YouTuber. He's, 
Yeah, um, but he's a uh, well-known YouTuber in the knife world. And a couple of other folks, I think, tried to bring it back. But it's an anti-rust thing. I've been testing it lately. Look, I'm not. this is not a full recommendation yet because I've just barely been testing it. But um, it is interesting. And it's um, maybe a little easier to apply than the frog lube stuff. Although it may be the same core stuff. Whatever it is, it is what it is. But I'll throw some of that on there. Is there rust? Maybe it's the slightest bit of corrosion. I don't know. Okay, so we've got everything cleaned off here. Let's go ahead and put things back together. So when you're doing this, uh, when you're doing this style of the axis lock disassembly, reassembly, um, things get a little tricky. But the way I'm going to go ahead and do things is I'm going to take some 10-weight nano oil here, and I'm going to apply it here and here. And I'm going to apply it here and here. And those are some big beads. But the reason I'm doing those big beads is because I want the, uh, the, the washers to actually stick to the blade using that surface tension. I want to make sure that everything slides in there effectively, and you know, it's also helpful to have the lubrication, but still, because my next step here is gonna to be to grab this, and I'm gonna grab it in such a way that the washers are roughly in alignment. And then what I'm gonna do is sort of take the, the handle and I'm gonna slide this through here and try and get all I really need to do is to get enough light through there that I can get this little tool as a watch spring bar tool into position inside there okay great excellent so now what I have I believe and I'm just going to check the alignment of the washes just visually I'm looking to make sure the washes are in their positions as they need to be great what I'm going to have now is the ability to um I will put the pivot here, which I forgot to clean off. I should clean that off. I'll put the pivot into position on top of this guy, and then I'll kind of slide the slide this guy out and slide the pivot in, ideally in a similar motion. And that should let me get everything back into position. This is, by the way, the same approach that you'll take for many mint, uh, mintegral, many integral knives. One other thing to note is that there is a D-shape to this pivot here, uh, and it looks like the D-shaped side is on the top. So I want to insert the pivot in such a way that the top of this guy is uh, right there. Okay, good. So what I've done now, oh, I feel it kind of sliding around in there. What I've done now is I've inserted the um, pivot and got, it looks like I've at least speared the washer or maybe the top part of it. So now what I'm going to do is kind of flip this whole assembly over a little bit because that'll let me use this to kind of manipulate the washers and whatnot, and ideally, step by step, I'll be able to slide the pivot in deeper uh, by kind of repositioning the washers that it's pressing up against, etc. And I'm just using this tool here to get everything in alignment. I'm also going to pull this guy back a little bit. Here, I'll see if I can zoom in, make this a little easier for you to see. Did I not put the freaking pivot collar in? I sure didn't. Okay. Number of people, no doubt, would just shout, Nick, pivot collar, you idiot. So I'll drop that back on there. I've probably lost everything alignment-wise, but let's try it. So this part goes in the top. Drop that in. Okay. And actually, that was a second part. Maybe I'm around the washer here. But okay. Back at the ranch. Uh, what I can do now, yeah, I think I am around the washer. That's great. I'm going to pull this back a little bit because by pulling the axis lock back, there we go. We're popping through. Hey, it's working out. Life is good. You can see this is the top area with the D-shape. So as I pull this back, it allows the blade to seat a little bit further back because it's the nature of the axis lock. And that allows the pivot to slide all the way through. And now you can see the pivot is basically all the way through. I'll just pull this back a little bit further and then ideally be able to snap the pivot a little bit of oomph, potentially. In the rest of the way through, yeah, there we go. We'll pop through. And I don't need it, you know, 100% of the way in because I do have the um, the pivot screw will help pull the pivot the rest of the way through. But now we, uh, we're all set. Uh, what I'm going to do is find my T6 driver. It is nice to not have to switch the bits. Having multiple drivers, no matter whether they're fancy or not, is pleasant. Clean this off a little bit, just using the same rubbing alcohol here. Whoops, I'll zoom back out a little bit. 
And now I'll apply a little Loctite here because we want to use this little, uh, this is blue 242 Loctite on a stick here. Um, but anyways, uh, the Loctite will just help keep things in position over the long term because once we get this dialed in and running great, I want to make sure it stays there. I'm going to use this and I'm going to kind of see as I turn, it's just pulling the pivot the rest of the way in. Okay, now I've stopped. That's going to be way too tight. So if I release this, the blade just stays. Um, that's not great. So what I'm going to do instead is just pop this guy through and relax a little bit there. Okay, that's still way too tight. So we'll back off. And there we go. Oh, no, asshole's still over there on the feeder. I had to look around. I hadn't heard him in a while. No, he's still protecting, just no one's fighting them. I feel vaguely self-conscious about it, because, like, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll look out there, and it's just like, hey, go away, asshole. And then, like, one of the neighbors is across the way, and I'm like, no, 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 not you. I'm tired of the hummingbird. And they, they, they don't understand, really. But that's okay. They don't need to. Okay. Continuing to just kind of back it off, because what I want to find here is the most free-swingingest place in this knife's action without blade play. No blade play yet, so let's back it off just a little bit further. Most free swinging -ist. It's um, not English, really. There we go. No play. Maybe the tiniest bit of play. Tighten that up just a little micro smidge. Eh. No play. That's good. Let's back this up a little bit. I'm just playing with it. I'm just playing with it here, guys. No, I'm just trying to make sure this is in as good a shape as I can get it here. Because that's, you know, one of the compelling things about the axis lock is that free shutting action here just makes things easier. Okay, no play. There he is, yeah. Um, so no play, everything's good to go here. Um, centering is about where I left it here. I'm actually going to see whether I can, by adjusting the scale, I'm going to loosen these screws in the back here. Because sometimes if you uh, retighten everything with the uh, pivot out, it can lead to some poor centering. So what I'm going to do is apply a little pressure to the blade in the direction I want it to go, uh, and then retighten these guys down a little bit. Sometimes those little details can actually make a difference. Not the action, but the centering. Yeah, actually, we're a little bit better off now. Beautiful. In fact, we are dead centered. No play. Oh, that's nice. See, sometimes there is a happy ending. Unless you're a hummingbird and assholes over there on patrol. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you. Sorry for the foul language, but sometimes a hummingbird prompts it. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love that sentence. And have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Uh, bye now.